Good day, everyone. We are to discuss lesson number four, which is about uh, rock forming minerals. I have here a presentation that will help us understand better the concepts and contents of lesson number four. So I hope you listen carefully as I have the discussion or as I discuss the topic. Okay. So here, the title of the lesson is Rock Forming Minerals. Good day, everyone. Before we start, I want you to be goal-oriented with, with our lesson, and that is to target the following competencies. I hope at the end of our discussion, you could figure out how to answer the following, okay? First, it is your task, um, and I am expecting you to differentiate rocks from rock-forming minerals. Second, identify common rock-forming minerals. Third is distinguish the different common rock forming minerals using their physical and chemical properties. Okay, for number one, of course, we need to differentiate rocks and rock forming minerals first. Okay, knowing what is the difference between the two can help us understand more, okay, and better the concept of a mineral. Second, for the properties, since I mentioned the word property, I am referring to the characteristics, composition, description of a certain matter. So those properties can be divided into physical and chemical properties. Physical property can be subdivided, okay, with intensive and extensive. So how are we going to know if it's physical properties? This could be dependent or non-dependent on the amount of matter. That would be, if it's not dependent on the amount of matter, that would be uh, intensive. For example, color. Okay, once you look over something, whether you get a piece or it's just a small amount, the property of color would still be the same. So it does not depend on the amount of matter. The other one under physical is the extensive uh, example where in the extensive physical property refers to characteristics that are very dependent on the amount of matter. Particularly for physical extensive properties, these are the volume, mass, okay? So for example, if someone drank a certain liquid substance, say for example, the mass is 12 ohms. Later, someone sip on it, okay? then uh, reduces the amount. So when you are going to take again the, the amount, you would notice it changes. So that kind of uh, physical property is very dependent on the amount. So if it, it is dependent on the amount, it falls under the category of um, physical extensive, okay? The other one, which is another category of properties, chemical, wherein these are characteristics that can lead to the formation of a new substance. So there is chemical changes that is there is a chemical change that should occur, okay? Or the, the chemical changes can prosper because of the chemical property. So as we go along the lesson, as we go along the discussion. Um, I hope you could figure out answers for these three. Although this is not directly a question, this is a target, okay? These are our learning competencies that you need to, um, you need to ponder and you need to wonder as we go along the lesson. So here is a brainstorm activity. I want you to answer this question. Are rocks and rock forming minerals the same? If you answered yes, then why? If you answered no, why not? This is just a general question, just to try your prior knowledge about the lesson. Okay, so let us proceed. Maybe some of you would say, yes, they are 
the same? And most of you would say no. Okay. Actually, those are those are correct. Okay. Since I'm just asking your opinion. Okay. But let us have the scientific way of differentiating the two. When we say rocks, these are aggregations of solid substances like minerals. So which means for a rock to form, there must be a lot of minerals. So in terms of composition, they are not the same. Okay? For rock forming minerals, minerals are defined as solid substances or inorganic solids wherein they are coming from non-living things. These are present in nature and can be made of one element or more elements combined together through chemical bonding. While rocks, for the rocks to form, there must be a lot of minerals. So in terms of number of composition and the chemical composition it has, they are very different. They are not the same. But as I go back with this picture, you would say some, some minerals could be as big as other rocks and some rocks can be as small as other minerals, vice versa. Size, shapes, okay, those are common property of matter. That's why I'm, I'm teaching this lesson that it's not enough to go over the physical property of matter. We need also to classify minerals according to their chemical composition and other properties. But I'm not saying you are, not, you are just going to proceed with chemical properties. I'm just uh, emphasizing that in dealing with minerals, we need to consider those properties. One is physical and the second one is chemical property. Okay, so let us proceed. I have here an analogy uh, between the difference or the difference between of a rock and a mineral. So can, as you can see, for a mineral to form, okay, there must be elements present. So before a mineral can form, there must be combination, bonding, okay, chemical bond between two or more elements. For this, the example of a mineral is a quartz. Quartz is made of silicon and oxygen. Silicon is an, is an element and oxygen is also an element. When they are chemically combined, we could form quartz. In the surface of Earth, the most common mineral that we could find are quartz, okay? which is made of silicon and oxygen. Silicon dioxide is the formula for quartz. So for mineral to form, there must be an element. And if there are two or more elements, they must become chemically combined. Here, when minerals combine with other set of minerals, they could form portion of rocks. Okay, then later it become a rock. Rock forming minerals are the basic founda or foundation before a rock could form. So in short, a rock cannot be cannot form or cannot be formed without the minerals. Minerals cannot form without the elements. When elements combine or the elements stand alone, they form minerals. When minerals are combined, they form rocks. So chemically speaking, they are not the same because the composition varies. Okay, here, as you can see, for granite rock, it is made of three types of minerals. One is biotite, second is feldspar, and the other one is quartz. Okay, so each mineral composes of different elements. Some would, would just have one element, the other would have two or more elements. So here I have a picture of different minerals that you could, uh, that we could uh, encounter 
in the near future if we are to work with minerals like for example if you are going to pursue your profession to become a mineralogist okay mineralogists these are experts okay that is dealing with the study of minerals we're in that study of minerals called mineralogy okay if it's study of rocks that's petrology okay so remember this one minerals do have definite uh, do have different chemical compositions okay unlike uh, they could have varied okay varied chemicals within them but it could also be just distinct so some minerals do have just one element in their composition okay in terms of the uses okay some minerals can also be used as an alternative for rocks and some rocks are stronger than minerals because they are already in aggregation so you consolidate all the minerals if there are consolidation com of or combination of different minerals they could form rocks in this case there are minerals that could be as big as rock okay so don't be misled about the shape in terms of the color okay uh it's not a reliable characteristic to identify fully a kind of mineral because there are minerals that you have the same color but they are different in composition okay there are also minerals that do have different colors but they are the same mineral example for quartz quartz do have different color okay but they have the same composition silicon and oxygen those are for quartz Unlike for other minerals, they could have the same color but different in chemical composition. Example, we have pyrite and gold. Pyrite and gold are pyrite are mistakenly identified as gold because of its color, but it's not the same as gold. Because pyrite, once you test its trick with that, you could figure out that the color it will leave is just gray. Aside for, uh, uh, instead of gold, like the AU or Aurum, which is literally gold, okay, it will give yellow color. But for pyrite, once you test the trick with it, the color in powder form will just be gray. So it means uh, it could deceive our eyes if we are just going to use only the color as part of the physical appearances to test certain minerals. So it is very important that we have physical and chemical properties to be uh, used in order for us to identify different minerals. So aside from having different colors, you could see and figure out there are different textures as well. Aside from the textures, you could also identify that they are in different shapes. So these are mainly properties of, of mineral that you could that could help you in order to describe them okay but it would not be enough um, to identify minerals through this uh, physically identified properties that's why we need to also go further and that is to use chemical properties so how can we classify minerals so here uh, there are two kinds of minerals. One is macromolecules or macro minerals, rather. Macro means large in Greek, and of course, our body needs larger amounts of macro minerals than trace minerals. Trace minerals are commonly found uh, minerals on Earth that could be used in industrial purposes and other functions. Okay, so what is are what are the examples under macro mineral group these are made of calcium phosphorus magnesium sodium potassium chloride and sulfur so those are example of minerals according to category of function so it could be a macro mineral and a trace mineral aside from that we could also classify minerals according to their chemical properties we could classify them using their, the ability to receive and gain electrons. So once a certain element receive or gain electrons, it forms an ion. Okay, so those are negatively charged ions that usually shows up 
but then you could also look over the, the uh, this anions okay through your periodic table of elements there are given uh, different elements that do have their ions anions and cations present as part of the content of a periodic table of element but we could also classify minerals aside from this uh, this way of classifying them we could also classify them into metallic minerals and the other one is non-metallic minerals when we say metallic minerals they mean these are minerals that could contain ferrous substances and the other one could be also non-ferrous substances when you say non-ferrous that could that those are uh, minerals that may contain uh, copper, nickel, but there's no iron, okay? While ferrous, uh, ferrous metallic minerals, they contain mostly of iron. So that is the first classification, metallic minerals. The second one is non-metallic mineral or non-metallic minerals. These are composers of non-metal elements that combine covalently, okay? Next. The next question is, how can we identify different minerals? Since at the beginning, we are, are, we are already orienting you regarding the properties, the way for identifying and the way to identify the different minerals is to look over different set of properties, like physical and chemical properties. But we need to consider also these following factors in order to uh, determine a mineral first. It occurs naturally. So mineral cannot be synthetically made. And letter B, it is inorganic, which means it could come from non-living things. Next is internal structure. Is it in orderly pattern? If it is, those are minerals. And letter D, it has characteristic of definite chemical composition because they could only be made of one element or chemical combination of two or more elements. Now let's proceed with the uh, different ways um, to classify and identify minerals. First, the ability to resist being scratched, which we call the hardness, okay? This was uh, Purdue, uh, this was um, identified and used by Frederick Moss, who was a German mineralogist. He produced a hardened scale using a set of 10 standard minerals. So each number do have different meaning, one being the lowest or the softest, and 10 being the highest or the hardest. So here, I have here an example or of a table wherein you could see the different hardness scale of different sets of mineral. So feldspar is actually at the middle, apatite and feldspar. Quartz, okay, the one that is present inside of, of um, a granite rock. So quartz is an example of mineral that is having a hardness scale of seven. Diamond is the hardest mineral in terms of the hardness scale. One, which is the softest hardness scale, we have the talk. Next, uh, to visualize what I have on the table, we have the following on the picture. So it's started talk. It can be powdered. Followed the gypsum, calcite, fluorite, orthoclase. Okay, we also have topaz, corundum. For the spot number two to spot number eight, this could change, okay? Because there's a lot and thousands of minerals on earth. But until today, diamond's still the hardest. So no one beat it, nothing beat it until today regarding the hardest, hardness scale. Let me clarify. It does not mean that if a, a mineral is hard, it is strong. When we say it is hard, it resists scratch. You cannot scratch it, okay? That's the scientific description of being hard, okay? Next, are other characteristics that we could use, okay, in order to identify uh, minerals are the following. Luster, 
wherein we could divide or assess ourselves whenever we see a certain mineral? Does it look like a metal? That's metallic luster. If it's not look like a metal, that is non-metallic luster. We could also use the word or uh, different adjectives, but it's better to use the word metallic or non-metallic because once light hits it, it would either reflect or not. So example of metallic luster are those metals, metallic uh, minerals like mica and galena. For non-metallic luster, we could have the characteristics of alavine and gypsum. Okay, next is color, which is one of the most obvious properties of a mineral. Uh, but remember this, color is not a reliable characteristic because there are certain cases that minerals, they have the same color, but in terms of chemical composition, they're not the same. Okay, so, but in, uh, still, color is a characteristic of mineral. So third, we have the streak. Okay, streak is when we wrap the mineral on a streak plate, it will produce a streak. So that streak is a color of powdered mineral, wherein you could use two different streak plates. It could be a darker one and the other one, it would be a white streak plate. If you're going to improvise testing uh, of streak, you could use the back part of a certain tile. You could use that, rub a certain mineral to that to test the powdered color or powdered mineral. That is a streak, okay? But let me clarify also, not all minerals can be tested in their streak. Okay, why? Because some crystals were not and cannot give a color in powder form whenever or if ever you are going to rub it using streak plate. Crystals would just leave a very, uh, um, very minimal terms of very minimal color that, uh, intolerable and not tolerable to see or you cannot able to identify the color because it's in crystal form but remember this we could use streak as one way of testing other minerals like for example if you are to test pyrite and gold okay for you to first determine if it's gold or not it should leave a gold color okay into the streak plate but if it's not Okay, one way of testing it is to rub it, and if it's not, it's not a gold. So pyrite can also be tested in a strict plate. It will leave a gray color. Next, specific gravity. This is the ratio between the mass of a mineral and the mass unequal, of an equal volume of water. Specific gravity refers to how the, so the certain mineral would float or would sink into the water. It's uh, something to do with its density. So a specific gravity is there are certain minerals that do have different density whenever it is in water. So that is one way of testing it. Some would float, some would sink. So another is the type of breakage, okay? For breakage, uh, this is how the minerals would break into pieces. This could be divided into two, the cleavage and fracture. So here, when we say cleavage, the way in which a mineral breaks along smooth flat planes, and these breaks occur along planes of thickness in the mineral structure. To make it short, when we say cleavage, this refers to the characteristic of um, having a predictable breakage. That's cleavage. While fracture, as we define it here, when a mineral breaks irregularly, the breaks are called fractures. But another way is if it breaks randomly or broken randomly, that is fracture. So once a mineral undergo breakage, okay, uh, the other that is predictable can form thin sheets, okay, and predictable way we could say that it's cleavage. If the breakage happens to be irregular and randomly, okay, that could be fractured. Another characteristic for us to determine a mineral or to test a mineral is 
uh, its tenacity. How well a mineral resists breakage is known as what we call tenacity. How strong, okay? How resistant the type of mineral in terms of breakage, okay? So in this case, and this is in this example, we could use the adjective brittle. If it's very, it has low resistance, it could be broken easily. And we could also say it's malleable if instead of breakage, it forms into thin sheets. And also ductile. So those are adjectives that could, could use for tenacity. Tenacity and hardness are not the same, okay? They are not the same. Tenacity is how well a mineral resists breakage. Well, hardness refers to the way of resisting scratch. Next, transparency, translucency, opaqueness. This talks about one property lang. That's transparent, uh, that, that is diaphanity or transparency. There are minerals that can be used to view objects. There are minerals that light can pass through but there's no image that could form and there are also minerals that light cannot pass through and those are opaque we could also test other material through uh, through tasting but remember this uh, minerals should not be tasted i'm just saying other characteristic of minerals okay they could be tasted like the halide and halide salts particularly other characteristics of minerals are they are very active to acids, if particularly when hydrochloric acid is combined with it, it will it will give a distinguishing bubbles or reactions whenever there is hydrochloric acid applied. So testing for calcite, limestone, or dolomite calls for ten percent hydrochloric acid. Uh, but strong white vinegar can be substituted for the acid. So there are minerals that is very reactive to different kinds of acid. Another kind of uh, characteristic that we could use uh, to identify and classify minerals are, or if a uh, safe example for calcite, calcite is the same color with halide. But if we are going to put that into a written paper, say for example, we are going to place the calcite over that paper, we could see there would be double refraction because text can be visualized in double. So that is one of the characteristics of a calcite that highlight cannot do, okay? Another characteristic is when you combine hydrochloric acid with it, it would fizz. Okay, another characteristic that is very usable in nature, okay, is if a mineral is able to magne magnetize or there is magnetic ability, okay, magnetism in short. This is a distinguishing characteristic of a certain mineral called magnetite. So another and last characteristic that we could have is the crystal shape, where in different Minerals can have different set of shapes, cubic, rhombohedral, hexagonal, and so on and so forth. So unlike for rocks, there are very this uh, there are different types of shape, but rocks cannot be in crystal okay, in cre cannot form a crystal shape. Unlike for minerals, they could. Okay, next. In terms of groupings, minerals can be grouped into silicate and non-silicate. So the root word for us to identify them is whether there is a silicon and oxygen present on the chemical composition. If there is none, it will fall to non-silicate. So silicate minerals, these have silicon, these have silicon and oxygen combination. Example of silicate minerals are feldspar, quartz, muscovite, and hornblend. For those uh, type of minerals that do ha don't have silicon and oxygen with it, okay, without silicon rather, 
these are exam these are the examples we have carbonates example po natin is calcite we also have sulfides sulfates native elements like gold diamond used in trade and jewelry and halides example of these are halite and used as common salt so here are the different rock forming minerals granite used for construction purposes graphite as an alternative for lead since it gives a black color whenever it's used for writing gypsum used in industrial or building plaster because of its color and its a hardness okay it can be used there it's, it's quite soft so number two in the hardness scale we also have halide which which the salt can be used as part of uh, food seasoning and for food to be taste okay to taste too we have uh, i mean it could help in giving taste or taste or flavor to the food for sulfur usually why uh, that is what yellow in color rather it is used as an industrial raw material through its major derivative which is sulfuric acid uh, there are soaps that also add sulfur to, sulfur with it because it is also uh, good for fighting fungus and bacteria you also have talc the surface mineral followed by tin and then titanium, which is used mostly in jet engines. Tin cans, these are used for different, uh, as different containers for um, soft drinks or for juices that are, that are in cans. Okay, even sardines, okay, they are using tin cans. Okay, next, we also have basalt, barium, beryllium, and bismuth. Again, these are just few of the minerals that, we have on earth these are few among those thousands of minerals that we could find on earth barium is used as a heavy additive in oil well drilling mud while beryllium it is used in light and very strong alloys for aircraft okay and others are used for x-ray tubes bismuth man can treat uh, upset stomach so upset stomach so in that case we could it could also be used as aside from medical purposes it could also be used for chemical industry like ceramics paint and as a catalyst to fasten up a chemical reaction to sum it up minerals are naturally occurring occurring in organic solids they are considered natural because they are derived from natural geologic process so these are made by nature not by man the physical properties of mineral, minerals are color, straight, hardness, cleavage, crystalline structure, the crystal shape, transparency or diaphanity could be opaque, translucent, transparent, magnetism, able to magnetize, tenacity, the way how well it would resist breakage, luster, the way it reflects light, okay? Odor, some could, some minerals do have specific odors, but this is least of the property because not all minerals will give a certain odor. Okay, and also we have the specific gravity. A mineral is a solid matter possessing a definite chemical structure that occurs naturally but does not have life. So it is commonly found in rocks because remember, as we defined rocks earlier. Rocks, these are aggregation of minerals. Minerals can be classified as metallic, non-metallic, and energy minerals in terms of the component of elements. In terms of uh, groups, we could have silicate and non-silicate minerals. In terms of uh, energy minerals, we could divide it into two. One is macro and the other one is trace mineral. Okay, so do not forget the characteristics written on the last part of this slide, last paragraph, because this would cover, or this would help you understand um, the different properties of mineral. It would, not, it would not just stick with color because there is a lot of property that we could use for us to identify its uses. Okay, example, if you know that the mineral is hard, therefore we could have used that into different functions that uses hardness property. If uh, it could be powderized or powdered rather, 
if it could be powdered, we could also use that as an additional additive for some designs or displays. For tenacity, how well it faces breakage, it is usable for us to make use, uh, to, to form, say for example, foundation of houses, we could mix minerals and other rocks with it. So could, we could have a bigger, stronger houses because there are minerals that are very strong. They could not break easily. There are also minerals that can be sold into the market, okay? There are minerals that are very pawnable. Minerals do have different value dependent on, depends on the uh, rare, uh, how rare the mineral is found. Aside from that is the value in the market. If it, say for example, for gold, as of today, it's 2,500 pesos for one gram of gold. So gold is just as an example of mineral. There's a thousand of minerals that we could also use or uh, search into, okay? And the way of breakage, we could have the cleavage and fracture, okay? So these are different properties that we could that could help us before we use a certain mineral, okay? Because with their properties are also aligned in accordance with the type of usage that it could have. So for that, I I am going to end this uh, session and thank you for attending and viewing my video. Thank you.